This is day one of our mission across the Pacific Ocean from the west coast of Mexico to French Polynesia. Today we're gonna talk about seasickness because seasickness almost ended my dreams of documenting this whole journey before it even started. In the last video I showed you guys everything I packed across the Pacific Ocean. We had emergency communication devices, flotation gear, all the camera equipment. I was prepared for everything, but I so wasn't ready for the seasickness. This is the morning of day one. Everybody's in the zone and ready to go. We're doing all the last minute prep, stowing everything away, checking the life raft. So this is a boat is sinking scenario and we can't get to it. Our hydrostatic release unit, when that goes below 10 feet, this will cut the line and then the life raft will float free. This red line here is the painter. You pull, pull, pull as it reaches the end. You've got a tug, it'll inflate. Oh yes! Oh my gosh, it's happening! Captain Colin actually treats us to our last land meal of Mickey D's. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh. McDonald's. And sushi? And sushi. And sushi! And I really want to thank Colin for inviting me on this epic passage. Soon I'm going to be sailing my family around the world in this very same boat. And the experience I've gained on Parlay is invaluable. It's like dog years of learning. Make sure you check out his channel to see this whole passage from his perspective. This is a significant moment in the history of Parlay Revival and taking on this daunting passage are eight brave souls from all different walks of life. So the last thing that we do before we leave yeah. is the custom agents come aboard, they inspect the boat, for what, I'm not really sure, they stamp our passports, and just like that, we are off. We're officially cleared out of Mexico! <laughs> we won't be setting foot on land for about 25 days which is really hard to grasp. I tend to look at life in like weeks at a time. So to think three or four weeks in advance that I'll be doing the same exact thing, it was hard to really process. We continue prepping the boat, tying down that second dinghy up front. Katie is fixing the telltales here, which are the little fluttering lines that show you if the wind is moving efficiently over the sails. At this point, my stomach starts to flutter a little bit as well, but this is normal. I always feel this way in the beginning of a passage and it typically goes away within a couple hours. We sail about an hour and we find a place to anchor so we can and scrub the bottom of the hull so we could be more aerodynamic. Is it aerodynamic or hydrodynamic because we're in water? Either way, a little bit of fuzzy growth can really slow the boat down. And since sailing is already really slow, it's literally jogging speed. We're like jogging speed across America. Imagine how long that takes. I just felt like running. So every little bit of speed counts. My job was to focus on the sail drives, which had a little bit of hard growth here and there, but I'm able to poke it and scrape it all off. I'm drinking a little bit of salt water here, which doesn't really help my stomach situation. The whole crew is helping, so we clean both hulls in under an hour, and then we are off. The problem with cruising the world is you're always bouncing between countries and encountering new languages. It took me a year to learn Spanish while I was down in Panama, but there's a much easier way. Speakly is a language app that's currently teaching me how to speak French because nous navigons vers la Polynésie Française. We're on the way to French Polynesia. Speakly can help you go from zero knowledge to solid speaking skills in just a few months with only 30 minutes of practice a day. It teaches you words and phrases based on relevance in real life situations. So you're never learning random vocabulary words that you'll never use. With their method, you'll be able to manage 72% of situations by only learning 1,200 words. It's the only language app that lets you choose how you want to learn. Y'all know I chose the speaking path because I love to talk. According to this guy right here, he'll talk the leg off a chair, that guy. <laughs> consider supporting our channel and check out Speakly with the link below. You'll get a free week to see if Speakly works for you and 60% off if you choose the annual subscription. All right, let's say goodbye to Mexico. Bye-bye, land. See you in four weeks. The seas are rough off the bat. Coming out of here is a shit fight. Be six foot swell, straight on the beam, on the side of the boat, and 20 knots. Did he just say shit fart? Shit fight. Shit fight. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> the boat is just rocking forward and back. It's called hobby horsing. And I'm falling all over the place, but you gotta get your sea legs. This is normal in the beginning of the passage, but it's making my stomach worse. Basically, as you start going up a wave, you're seeing the sky and then you crest the wave, then you start seeing the ocean. I'm exaggerating a bit, but it's essentially this motion. It's like a slow but never ending roller coaster. By evening, my stomach had gone way downhill, or technically uphill because it was like up in my throat. I know I'm screwed because to treat seasickness, you have to get ahead of it. You're supposed to take meds like the day before. Once you start getting sick, even if you take meds, it only gets worse. I took a bunch anyways, and then I texted Mary that I am fucked. <laughs>
because a crew member that's seasick is basically dead weight. Not only can they not contribute, but now they're a burden on everybody else. On top of that, I was planning on filming every single- I had to make a video every single day like I promised last time. We are gonna make a video for every single day that we're at sea with something in this pile here. And at this point, there was no way this was gonna happen, so I basically just gave up mentally. I was like, maybe I'll just do one video for the whole passage. So I end up popping a few of these right here and just sleep. And that's basically what I did for the first three days of the passage. Aside from when I was on watch, and we had three two-hour shifts every day, but other than that, I was just zonked out. So seasickness affects everybody differently. For me, I typically feel a little bit woozy the first couple of days, but I usually don't get that throw up feeling like I did this time. Sometimes I get a lingering headache, but everything pretty much disappears starting with the second day. Colin, our captain on the other hand, has years of experience on this boat and even more time on super yachts and he never gets seasick. The only time he feels it is in super rough seas and in the engine room where you can't see anything, plus a little bit of diesel smell. Katie, the least experienced of us all, who's never been on a passage, I don't even think she's ever seen sailed before, she didn't feel anything. She had no symptoms and was completely fine. Brit is probably the least affected of all of us. She can actually edit while we're doing that crazy motion with her head just in the computer. Vinny here does get seasick, but he was prepared and he started wearing the prescription patch behind his ear like the day before. I woke up on day two feeling a little bit better, but I was so drowsy from all the meds. Aside from my stomach now, I had this banging headache, but I pull it all together to go on my watch starting at 6 a.m. I even try to film a little bit. This is day two of our mission across the Pacific Ocean, and we've done 97 miles so far. That's 2,000. 903 more to go. And right before that is also where I got caught sleeping on watch. You know this is more watching the damage. <laughs> So just FYI, even if uh, your seasickness meds say non-drowsy, they definitely are still super drowsy. They still put me down like I'm taking sleeping pills. I swear I only shut my eyes for like three seconds, but Katie caught me David. <laughs> and narked on me to the captain. And that's when she became my arch nemesis. So all of day two, the seas are still rough, doing the up and down sky, sea, sky, sea. And I'm still knocked out whenever I wasn't on watch, but I did start waking up whenever someone would catch a fish. Like this massive mahi Jamie caught. Dude, this thing was huge. Go, Jamie! Go, Jamie! It took forever just to clean it. How many pounds do you think that one is? At least 50. And it fed us for days. Fish tacos, sauteed fish, fish curry, fish and salad. We had so much. I never had so much fish in my life. And then Colleen caught a freaking marlin. She fought it all the way back to the boat. And at the last second as she's pulling, it snaps the line and she smashes the reel into her ribs, bruising them. Came back and hit me after he snapped the line. It's actually what we wanted to happen, believe it or not. <laughs> Didn't want to have to deal with that bloody bill. We already don't have any room for fish. This is only day two. So our freezer, the fridges, everything's still filled with meat and vegetables. We caught eight fish that day. Check that, they caught eight fish that day. I just tried not to throw up on the couch. Apparently the area that we were in is the mouth of the Sea of Cortez and we're crossing over. So the fish are still coming out. Once we're in the wide open ocean, probably won't be catching too much. So how do you deal with seasickness? There's patches prescription patches with scoplamine that you put behind your ear. This is what Vinny was taking. You gotta wear that well before you start the trip though. And then there's these herbal version of the patches, which do absolutely nothing at all. You have pills like Dramamine and Bonine here, or this weird stuff I got in Mexico. Gravol? They definitely help, but they make you super sleepy. You feel like you're looking through glass bottles, which is probably why you don't feel as seasick because you're so sleepy you don't feel it. I personally like boning. They seem to work better for me than Dramamine, and this is exactly what I was taking. A lot of them. Then you have the natural remedies like ginger chews or ginger tea or sparkling water, but those tend to just treat the symptoms. Another natural treatment that actually kind of works are these wristbands with this pressure point thing that pushes right here. The version of this that works really well is the watch that shocks you over and over. It's like a little scratch. Mary wore one of the watches on our passage from St. Martin to Panama that one week. It was actually her first time sailing or even being on a boat and she was solid the whole time. 
I'll link to it below. Make sure you pick up a bunch of extra batteries, which are super cheap. A huge part of seasickness is actually the mental aspect of it. It's your body fighting the discrepancy between what your eyes see and what your inner ears feel. This is totally anecdotal, but if I don't fight the motion of the boat as much and I just kind of let my body go with it, I don't feel as bad. But it's really tough to do that when you've been on land for so long and you're used to just catching your balance with every single movement. If you do start feeling seasick, the best place to go is up on the flybridge. And it also helps sometimes if you're driving because once again, you're kind of like controlling where the boat goes. So mentally you're more in control. The worst place to be in an engine room or down in the cabins where you can't see outside and the movements are even more exaggerated. So if you get yourself into the middle of the boat here, you technically won't move around as much. But if you're in the front part of the boat, look at how much that moves as you're going over the waves. Believe it or not, for most people, seasickness does go away after like three to five days. So for all of you guys out there that want to sail but know you can get seasick, there is hope for you, okay? You will get used to it eventually. And by day three, I did start to feel a little bit better. I still had this nagging headache and I couldn't really look at a screen for more than a few minutes, but my stomach wasn't doing flips anymore. So this whole time I'm actually not eating that much because I'm terrified it's all gonna come back up and I'm killing it with the diet because even when I do eat, it's all about the portion control. Check out this ridiculously healthy cucumber and pepper salad that I'm eating here. I actually enjoyed it. I did not. The seas were still rough, but my body started getting used to this up and down and rolling motion. So at this point, I'm like, okay, maybe there's hope that I can start making videos now and it's not too late. And it was perfect timing because that evening we roll up on this epic volcano on San Benedicto Island that actually erupted in 1952. Join us tomorrow for day four where Captain Colin and I actually go up the mast and I fly the drone all the way up and over the volcano so we can see inside. Subscribe to Dave so you can watch him cross the ocean. <laughs>